Hi, thanks for clicking. This is Kayla from 9CI here with Bruce. Hello. <laughs> uh, we are reviewing a video that we've watched recently on YouTube from Dr. Martin Paul. He discusses uh, the effects of EMF on voltage-gated calcium channels or VGCCs and uh, what VGCCs are, VGCCs are are little tiny tunnels within the cell that go from the inside to the outside of the cell and they allow calcium and there are some other ions uh, that travel within and out of the plasma membrane. So the that's, that's, the mechanism, that, that's one of the mechanisms for microwave radiation to hit the cell and then that's, that's what allows the, causes the effect within the cell when the mm -hmm. microwave radiation hits your body. Yeah, that's, so that's okay. when it messes with those and right. their ability to function properly then it causes influx or outflux of calcium uh, which okay. messes up the, the cell's okay. equilibrium kind of thing. Okay. So it throws wow. off the cell at a very small level, okay. which leads to symptoms at a much larger level. Okay. Uh, there are five types of VGCCs. Okay. The L, R, N, T, and P slash Q. Okay. Um, L is most common for commonly affected by calcium channel blockers, which he goes into that as being a possible treatment. Like like a, a drug that somebody would take to, to, to stop this from happening. Yeah, so he has a possible um, mechanism for stopping the See symptoms. my facial reaction to that? It's like, why not eliminate the root cause? But, you know, why, why do that when some... you can treat the symptoms? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, these, yeah, there's a, there's a drug for, you know, to, to mask the symptoms of so many things, right? But and that, uh, the, these effects show up at much lower levels, like microwave level, extremely low frequency, uh, they're well below the thermal level. This is where they're Okay, affected. so well below the thermal level, we know that. And, yeah, and also at a low not. frequencies, really low frequencies too, mm -hmm. like 60 hertz, 50 hertz, AC mag fields. All, all that, that stuff. It all does, through the same mechanism. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it's <sighs> most common with pulsed compared to non-pulsed or continuous uh, because... Oh. Okay. As we know, pulsed is... As we've discussed in many other videos, pulsed is way more prevalent in our environment. Because of it's more our... bio. So he's saying it's more biologic pulsed radiation and pulsed microwave pulsed radiation is more biologically damaging. Mm -hmm. Biologically active uh, than okay than continuous. And he'll get into that the details of why, right? Yeah, he gets okay. into that a bit more too. He gets into a lot of a lot way more. It, the video is like an hour and a half, so ours hopefully won't be an hour and a half long. <laughs> okay, yeah. To review. Um, so he also gets into something that is quite interesting. That increased intensity doesn't necessarily mean increased damage. Which. Yeah, that was a tough one for me to digest because, you know, we, we've got, you know, our, our safe and sound pro meter and uh, it's used. And so the, the normal thinking or my thinking has been, well, OK, let me lower my exposure as much as mm -hmm. possible. Which is not necessarily a bad thing. No. But there might be certain intensities where it's actually quite a bit more biologically active. So you might hit one of those within your body by decreasing the intensity. But all of these intensities are going to be different. So which ones are the dangerous ones? We don't know. No one knows. <laughs> and is everyone going to be the same? Probably not. No, everyone's different. So... And what? different frequencies are going to have different effect too, right? Exactly. So there's going to be a lot of different mechanisms and factors affecting this for possible damage. And we don't just don't know. So there's a lot of research that needs to go into it if we're actually going to figure out which ones are dangerous. And then once we do, we can tune our meter to do fix that. But... Right. Or to, recognize them right but we just don't know yet right so yeah there's a lot of data to gather right yes yeah, um, so, <laughs> so yeah he uses the term in the video uh he's he's really um making a strong case for lots of empirical testing yeah which i think a lot of people that are doing the research are saying we need but mm -hmm. it's a lot of research to do. yeah um he so these are things that are happening well below the thermal level mm-hmm um, so heat interacts with the cell in three dimensions. Uh, when you say heat, oh, oh just like, uh, t hot like, temperatures. Yeah, like. so like uh, the thermal level of radiation will affect it in three dimensions. Yeah. And the reason that doesn't affect the VGCCs mm -hmm. is because of it acts in three dimension, but uh, vers versus coordinated aligned forces. So uh, to have hit the cell and have it actually affect it, uh, they are more of a one-dimensional kind of thing. So to open the calcium channel, it needs to hit at the proper... Okay. One, like, they have to be unified in one direction. Um, 
Okay, so yeah, that was a mind-blowing thing for me too because that totally makes sense. I mean, uh, it explains, he explains, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that, that you know, just, just, just getting your, your cells being heated from a, you know, a bright light or, yeah. or something like that is not going op- to affect the, the calcium channels yeah. because it's from three dimensions, it's random and stuff. But, yeah. but radiation, microwave radiation, um, is is polarized it's aligned and so it's going to be what allows these channels to open up exactly kind of like yeah see that overstimulates them in one direction in one direction only and that's why it's an unnatural uh toxin if you will exactly yeah uh see i didn't yeah that that was cool to explain that yeah to hear that explained and why certain frequencies are going to have a greater effect um he gets into that as well right um he says something about the forces being 7.2 million times higher on the VGCCs than they are in other parts of the cell because of lots of physics and Coulomb's law. And he breaks down the number and right. shows the math, but it's... Yeah, without having to... We, yeah. I don't think we have to talk about the math, but um, uh, it, was, it was one of the best explanations that I've heard. You know, we've talked in other videos about, um, you know that things are affected at, at, at levels much lower than what are considered safe by the current safety standards. And I was always curious, it's like, okay, well, we know that that's happening. We mm-hmm. know that DNA single double strand breaks are happening. But yeah. why is that? And, and that explanation of this 7.2 million and how, how he breaks it down, mm-hmm. it's like... It's uh, like getting one more step in the puzzle of yes, the Yes, one more step, yeah. So it was, it was kind of sobering to hear that because it's just like, man, okay, so we're, we're so we're tolerant of natural things from heat, but all of a sudden these artificial stimuli like microwave radiation and the things which are new in our environment, no wonder they're wreaking havoc and causing all this destruction and damage in our cells. Because they're Cause, directional. Yeah, because they're, very... they're directional, and this is a totally unnatural... Uh, unnatural thing that we're not being exposed to in the past. Mm-hmm. We haven't evolved to take that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and it affects, like, the VGCCs affect a lot of stuff within our bodies. Like, uh, oh, you said DNA spray, single and double stranded DNA breaks, right. breaks, breaks cancer, uh, the blood brain barrier, uh, infertility, of course, we've discussed most of that, neuropsychiatric effects. So yeah. it, it, it it's destroys the blood brain barrier. It yeah. really affects it, yeah, I mean, yeah, which is kind of important because that's yeah. what kind of keeps our brains from yeah being exposed to everything else that's going on in our body. Right. Yeah, and that so it affects the four major things that we consider to be very important to us: our health, right, our brain integrity, so specifically our thoughts, uh, genomes, obviously, and then obviously that leads to effects on offspring for reproduction. Right. Um, which he also links the offspring damage to being increased risk of like autism, ADHD, and Alzheimer's disease as well. Right. Yeah, very, very sobering to hear this. Uh, There was one thing I was talking to Kayla about uh, before this, that some other people have made references in graphs. If you look at the slope of the uh, level of microwave background, microwave radiation that's in our environment, and you look at the slope of the rise in uptick of, of, uh, neurological issues, yeah. uh, um, ADHD, and response, yeah, yeah. Alzheimer's, um, and it's just like you know I find it hard to ignore the the similarities in slope, and 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 so his his YouTube video explains his presentation mm-hmm. uh, helps explain why why that might be happening, right? And he also does briefly go into why we're not the only ones being affected. Like plants have similar mechanisms as well. Right. They're not obviously VGCCs, but Right. The same kind of concept. Yeah. So that's a pretty sobering, pretty sobering picture of what's going on, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It was a very well done uh, presentation. It was a bit long. <laughs> so now one thing that you uh, talked about a little bit, um, uh, he mentioned that, uh, that the effect of microwave radiation happens pretty, pretty quickly, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, the effects on the VGCs are within five seconds. So okay. that is actually kind of a good thing that we know, even though it's very quick. Right. Uh, we at least will have something to measure, and we know when to measure it, so we can know when the change is going to happen. So that's uh, like it's not a great thing to know. Well, to it's, have, but it's knowledge. Yeah. So that, that that's one thing. Yeah, right. Yeah, because 
Okay, so we know it's like it happens that, you know, more or less exposure doesn't necessarily mean better because of these mm. different levels. So there's so many things to test for. And it's like, it's, uh, you know, I'm sitting here going, well, how, how do we even, where do we begin? Okay, we've got an RF than, meter. Right. So the good part about this, the fact that, that biologically we react to, to microwave radiation or extremely low frequency radiation within five seconds, to me, that's, that's good news because if we do need to do tests, mm -hmm. right? We know when um, to then we, we can and what? we can we can see results within uh, see influences within five seconds. Yeah. Okay, exactly. so that was a really good thing. I didn't know that it happened that quickly. My personal experience has been that I you know and a few hours later kind of thing. Well a few long term effects are a few hours later, but electrosensitive people could probably re relate to this that mm. that they're aware of something going on very quickly. Yeah, exactly. And and so his his presentation goes into why mm. you know why that's happening, which was cool. Yeah. So Yeah, it was kind of a new point of view for yeah. all of the research. Yeah. Anyway, fascinating video, eh? It was, yeah, it was yeah. really good. Well, I hope that uh Help to summarize slash simplify uh, his video. If you, we'll put the link down below in the description if you want to check out his video. And yeah, thank you very much for discussing this with us, Bruce. Oh, thank you for bringing it to our attention. I mean, that's why that's what <laughs> Kayla's doing with Nine CI. Fascinating work. Thanks, Kayla. Thank you. Okay, see. Yeah. You.